Welcome into the Film Guy Network. It's football season, which means I've got a film study for you. is up ladies and gentlemen welcome in to the film guy network on a fabulous tuesday wednesday thursday however wherever you found it appreciate you for being here thank you if you like any portion of today's broadcast go ahead and hit that thumbs up button like subscribe rate review we do this film study around here every monday and tuesday sometimes wednesday and thursday depending on whether or not there's a big matchup coming up that weekend uh obviously have broken down the first half between georgia and alabama a lot of people saying this was a tale of two halves I would agree to an extent. I think this is a tale of two halves from an execution standpoint. Georgia struggled to execute in the first half. I'm going to show you some clips, particularly from Alabama's defense, where they might have been lacking some execution in the second half. Certainly had some opportunities to turn Georgia over. Defensively, you're going to see the only adjustment in this football game, in my opinion, be made by Glenn Schumann and that Georgia defensive staff just from an alignment standpoint. And I think you're, you're going to see that cause some problems for this Alabama offense and cause some of those stalls they had starting out in this second half. Um, we do it a little different around here, okay? We like to watch the film. We like to grind the tape. We're going to go through every single play for the most part in this second half and really show you how things changed in this ball game. One thing I will tell you right off Jump Street, fourth downs were an obvious reason that Georgia's offense started to move the football at a much higher rate, okay? It's very hard to take this uh, uh, offensive analysis, okay, and apply it moving forward, all right? A lot of people looking at this saying, Georgia might have a tremendous amount of confidence offensively. To an extent, I do think the performance was certainly skewed by the fact that, that fourth downs were available. You're going to see some second and 10, second and 12 rundowns, okay, run plays called by Georgia's offense Things that wouldn't normally happen statistically in a football game. That's a standard score situation, okay? We got a saying around here, let's shut up and let's grind the tape. All right, we had an hour and 15-minute film study uh, yesterday, Jonathan. I don't know how long this one's going to go. I don't know if I'm going to be tighter. I don't know if I'm going to be, uh, you know, whatever. I think it's going to be the same. Here's the thing I think Georgia, or Alabama had defensively, and I don't know if you could call this an error. I think this is kind of who they are um, from a fundamental standpoint, schematically, ideology, whatever you want to say. It's how they play. They're a man football team. They're a cover one robber football team for the most part. They play a ton of it. The only other thing they do is might play a little bit of Tampa, and it comes against preset looks, set looks that you can kind of manufacture as an offense and get into. The hard thing is you've got to beat their football players. They've still got great football players, so when they play man-to-man -man defense, you still got to throw perfect balls. You still got to create separation, okay? But there wasn't much of a schematical change, if at all, from Alabama defensively. And this is the first look of it, all right, in the second half. They're still playing single high. The box is still really, really heavy against Georgia. Now, granted, Georgia is in a very condensed set. But nonetheless, I wanted to show you to start the football game or to start the second half. And for the remainder of this film study, you will see this virtual one high look. And I'll show you when those zone looks ultimately rear their head. Okay, let's let them watch that play right quick. Jonathan, I got to get the keyboard. All right, a little toss sweep here. A uh, little truck toss is what we call this on this channel. Uh, number four, getting your butt whipped. All right, we are trying to get to the outside. All right, as an offense, we are blocking down, blocking down pulling around, all right? We are trying to get to this grass. So as 13 shows color, number four, as, as 14 or 13 shows color, guys, we've got to get our head on that upfield shoulder. This is a tremendous job by Malachi Moore right here of keeping that outside arm free. That's what we talk about on this channel all the time. He doesn't make the play, but he makes the play. We have to bounce this now as an offense, okay? And now we're running laterally. We don't want to do that. Corner comes down, ultimately makes the tackle. Now second and 10, okay? That right there is Malachi Moore making a play. Very veteran football player, very savvy football player, going to play on Sundays for a good bit of time, I would imagine, okay? All right, so Alabama showed this a good bit in the first half as well. A little simulated pressure right here. They're going to rush four and drop some. Which four are they rushing? We don't know as an offense. That's the problem with simulated pressures, okay? That's the problem with simulated pressures. We don't know who's coming, right? 
We motion the back in, I think. No? What do I, what do I have written down? Oh, the simulated pressure messes our, our, your protection up as an offense. We're in scan protection, I believe, which means we're going to get back all on one level and identify the threats. The problem area comes from over here. We get a little faint job right here, and I think we get a wrap from the back or from the backer. Nope, just let the defensive end go because we think the backer's pressuring us. Rule of thumb in pass protection, take the down lineman. Rule of thumb, just take the guy in front of you. All right, take the big guys. Let the, let the smaller guys rush from space and let the quarterback play hot off of him. Almost an interceptable ball here. Can't quite tell what Bama's playing. It is some type of zone, though. We know that. All right, oh, that's the referee. It is some type of zone we can see with the eyes of the defenders. I would say that's some type of, I don't even know. That's the hard part about Womack. Sometimes his coverages can be so multiple. I don't know what he's playing. I don't know what he's playing. Okay? But nonetheless, you're getting zone. Beck forces the ball into uh, two guys. Okay? Luckily, properly overthrows it. All right? And it doesn't get intercepted. Intercepted. All right, third and ten right here. Okay? And you're bringing pressure. That is a f actually a five-man pressure. Or is that four? Actually going to faint this guy. All right, I'm going to bring one, two, three, four. All right. Ooh, back fucks up. Can't check out here. I don't think you're allowed to check out here. Maybe. Maybe we're blocking 505. So here's the problem with, again, doing this. And I'll be honest, when I, when I find areas where I don't know what's going on, right, when I don't know the actual call, are you free released? If so, then I don't know what you two are doing in here because you should be accounting for the Mike linebacker. All right, you should be accounting for the Mike linebacker. And based off the late reaction and the late spin from the center, all right, right now, we, we're accounting for him if we're in a five-man protection. So we've got to be passing this defensive tackle off. All right, the center's got to be coming off as that guard passes that off, and the left guard's got to be able to pick up the mic right here. It's a blown protection. And it gives up a sack. But I would, I would argue that's a blown protection based off the stunt. Right? That is a really, really well-designed stunt, and that is a well-thrown stunt right here on third and 10. Even a great job from this three-tech right here influencing the guard. Look, he's going to rush his outfield or upfield shoulder and then stick inside. And because he pressed him, right, because he got into his framework of his body, now Dylan has to commit. As the left guard commits, he's cooked. Absolutely cooked right now. All right, so first defensive possession here for Georgia. First thing I notice right now, overhang defender. Overhang defender. We take a look at this first uh, half picture, and Georgia's nickel was standing right here. The safety was still over there, and Alabama absolutely murdered this area of the field with the back offset. And we sat here going, wow, alignment's a real concern. Edge contains a real concern. We just don't have enough bodies over there as a defense. You're going to see things start to drastically change here in the second half. That was the adjustment, the overhang defender, so we can stop all of this stuff that they keep throwing at us, all this extra jet stuff that they keep throwing at us into our extended flank. Okay? And there you see it. Boom. Now, the overhang defender's right there in the area, all right, causing some problems, all right? Runs him to the sideline, pick up a four. Pick up a one, actually. All right, they're trying to hit the rail again. I'm going to flip the back, all right? This is players adjusting, all right? They're trying to run the same mesh spot with the running back rail, I believe. We're going to do... Some similar concepts of this right here. We're going to put everybody in the spots, all right? But we're really trying to hit this rail shot with the running back right here. Watch this football player, okay? This is what happens when we kind of run schemes multiple. Now, it's fine if they work, right? But Because this rail shot has worked for them. We keep running it over and over again. Eventually, smart football players are going to adjust. Watch three. As soon as he sees it, all right, he's already pointing. He knows, all right, we're getting this rail. I'm going to sit right on top of it. Cause some secondary, uh, or actually some second guessing, rather, from Milrow. But again, 
There's no perfect defense for this guy. You cover everything. He still puts you in a third and one. He still puts you in a third and one. I think it actually might be a third and four. Yeah, it's third and four. Nonetheless, still picks up five yards, and it's a positive down for them, despite the fact that, you know, you did your job. All right, this motion, this travel motion right now. Jonathan, my, my non-football observer in here, what are we seeing? We are seeing man coverage. Great job, Jonathan. We are seeing man coverage. All right, so as, a def or as an offense, we know we've got man coverage. Now, here's the deal. Alabama, great coordinator, great coordinator, great play designer. He's going to see man coverage. They're going to motion into a stacked release, all right? And then we're going to run some combination of this right here. We're going to switch these guys. We're going to make number 24 and number 12, who's traveling in with this motion, we're going to make these guys trade this off. We're going to make them execute in man coverage right here. Watch this motion. Okay, boom. Here comes the switch. Number two is going up underneath. So here, as number two comes underneath, 24. You've got to latch on him. As he rolls, you got to roll with him, 12. All right, and safety, we've got a running back checking out of the backfield here as well. All right, so there's a lot going on right here, and they get it transferred really, really well. Covered, covered, covered. All right, so now quarterback's got it. All right, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? HDMI is going to shit out on me. We're going to eventually find some grass here, but this ball is not exactly thrown with uh, a tremendous amount of confidence. It flares on him. Probably should have been caught by Bernard right here. I believe that's Bernard. All right, probably should have been caught. Probably a first down here, right? Sticks are right there. He's right here. Probably a first down here. Missed opportunity, no doubt. Missed opportunity, no doubt. But in my opinion, a missed opportunity for a home run or what against bad defenses probably is a home run. We probably got grass right here against most defenses. Okay, so great job by Jalen. At least getting down to the check down here, all right, and, and, and getting this ball out in a winnable situation. Bernard drops it. They punt the football. But you can see the adjustments from Georgia defensively just based off of alignment, right? Just based off of alignment right there on early downs, kind of hindering the run game, forcing checkdowns. All right, hey, catch the ball, four. Catch the ball, four. All right? By the way, here's this too high look that they keep showing where these two dudes run like this and then settle their feet, okay? He's got this middle of the field. It's a version of Tampa. Okay, guys, we got a corner sitting out over here. Now, this corner makes a tremendous play. I'm going to say Oscar Delp dropped this football. Oscar Delp certainly did drop this football, all right? But that corner's got no business being back there. He's got no business being back there. He's being an instinctual player. He's already passed. This is this corner, by the way. He's got responsibilities for this flat in Tampa. He's supposed to be out here, all right? He is transferring this off. He's going to squat on this force this ball into this window, and then react, run, break this ball up. It's a tremendous play by this corner. Also, catch the damn ball. Catch the ball. It's right there. Good punch out by seven. You can't play that better as a corner. Look at it. Cannot play that better as a corner. All right. All right, so we need to start looking for moments in this football game where knowing we're playing with fourth downs as an offense is impacting play calling, all right? Because that's what you guys are searching for. And everybody knows it was certainly a, a, a difference maker in this football game, the fact that you could go for it on fourth downs in the second half. Here's the deal. Second and 10, we're going to see a second and 12 on the, ne on the next possession. All right, rundowns for Georgia in this situation. Why? Because they're basically playing first down right now. We can take shots on first down because second down is first down because we're playing on fourth. And we know this as an offense. So we call a, a, a screen pass right here on second and 10, willing to just play for third and six. You know what I mean? But that's what we're paying attention to now as the, as the game continues, right? Where is the game being affected by the situation? Um, when I first watched this, I thought, damn, why did he cut this ball back up? Because of this right here. LT Overton doesn't make this play, but he makes this play. The fact that he is pursuing this ball and has recognized Tunnel as fast as he has, has denied this opportunity. And by the way, we don't have the full all 22. We got the sky view right now. What you can't see is number 55's right here. 
All right, and he's ready to make that block on that inside linebacker. This could be a big play. 22 stops it and forces this ball back into where his help is from these defensive backs. Simple effort play from 22. Watch him right here. Great recognition immediately off the snap. Turn and run. Boom. Screen. Turn our head around. Let's sprint. Let's stop this play from going back inside where it's designed. Guys, this, this is their base coverage. This is what they play. This is who they are. This guy is the robber. This guy plays the middle of the field. Everybody else is locked up. He's man-to-man -man with the running back right here. He's actually going to drop out. This is man-to-man -man coverage. The guys on the outside are playing cover one. This was the look the entire football game, well, for the most part, all right? It's a decent job here recognizing man coverage, all right? Knowing that you don't have a winner, but also knowing you got man, so I'm a scramble. I'm a threat against cover one robber, even though I run a 4 8 two. I got a feeling already it's going to be a long one. All right, this is the fourth and one. Not much analysis here for you except for this right here. I think you're catching. I think you're catching. I think you have a tendency to do this as well. I want Michael Morris to play every down like he pulls and kicks on counter. I want, that's, that's the type of violence I want to see you play with every single time. Because right now, this dude brings the fight to you. All right, this dude brings it to you right here on fourth and one, and you're lucky it gets picked up. But you're catching right now on fourth and one, and I don't like that. Now, I know we got to deliver this combination block for this center. I am very well aware of what our, 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 our responsibilities are. I am. But when we get to this level, our hands are down. We're just accepting this shot right in the face, and I'm not okay with that. Okay? I'm not okay with that. Pick it up, though. Pure confusion across the board. Pure confusion across the board. And it cost you a massive play right here. All right, quarterback doesn't know what's going on. We got late motion. We're still hands up right now with seven seconds left in the play clock. We're looking at the sideline like, what the shit is going on? Quarterback doesn't quite know what's going on. All right, now, Bama hops into a zone. Boom, boom, boom. Now. This runs wide ass open, all right, wide, wide open, Anthony Evans, boop, running down the sideline. We are scrambling to it, all right, we are scrambling to it. How many times, I don't, I don't mean to compare this guy to a Heisman Trophy winner, but he did have Heisman Trophy odds preseason. How many times during the Joe Burrow Heisman Trophy winning season did we see Justin Jefferson get hit on this type of scramble to his right? So many times. Dozens. They beat Ole Miss with it to win the damn football game, all right? But I personally believe the reason the quarterback is scrambled is because in the brain, he's not reading everything clearly right now because pre-snap, he's doing this with seven seconds left. We don't know what we got going on, all right? We don't know what we got going on, but we know we got a busted coverage from Alabama. Carson doesn't quite see it, continues to pull the ball down and run to grass, all right? It's a positive play, but it should have been a touchdown. Should have been a touchdown, but I don't, I don't blame that on necessarily Carson. I blame that on this right here. I blame that on this right here. What are we doing? What do we got going on? What is happening? Pure confusion to start the, the snap, okay? Even though some would listen to me say that and go, well, it is on Carson. He's supposed to have everybody off the, off, off, on the ball ready to go. Yeah. That looks like pressure to me. That looks like pressure to me. Um... So this is the second, third, maybe fourth time we've seen them show zero, right? We saw it in the red zone, backed up or in the goal, on the goal line situation before the half to get, cause the safety. We're seeing it again right here. Carson's going to check out and get to a screen pass right here. I think this gets maybe called back for Anthony Evans' hold. Yeah, which 100% a hold. 100% a hold right there. In fact, on my photos of it, he's got that left hand hook behind the damn shoulder collar uh, of that uh, Mbakwe right there as well. Wasn't no, wasn't no defensive adjustment, guys. There wasn't. They did what they did. They played what they played. Let's go to 422. Look, we got a false start from Xavier Truss, senior. Redshirt senior, sixth year senior. All right, second and 11. 98% of the time, 
in a real score football game where you're not down 23 points in the third quarter, probably throwing the football here? Probably. Stat, stats, data shows probably throwing the football here. They're running it. They're running the ball. That's an obvious sign of play calling changing, right? Obvious sign of play calling changing for them. Let's go to 440. About 30 minutes in? 20. 20 minutes in. Carson sees pressure again, checks to another screen here. Okay? Now, they simmed the pressure here, right? But nonetheless, he's checking out for a reason. All right? He sees all these bodies in here. And whether or not you're simulating pressure or not, right, whether or not these guys are dropping, they're still close to the line of scrimmage. So if we beat them with the ball right now, we've got the numbers. All right? Again, are we checking to a, are we checking to a tunnel screen on third and ten in a normal football game? I don't know. I don't know. You were, you were probably going to say no. Probably, probably going to say no? Probably. Probably. And here's how I know they're probably not checking to a tunnel screen when they get simulated pressure on third and ten. They didn't do it in the first half. Right, they gave up a safety on this same exact look. All right, um, again, the game plan didn't change. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't do much differently, uh, did Alabama? Situationally, you are who you are. That's what good defenses do, by the way. They have core traits. They know what they do and they do it well. I see what you're saying about Anthony Evans, dude. I'm telling you, he's got to get more burn. He's got to get more burn. Can't get a hold when you're blocking either. Yeah, no, no, no. Can't get a hold when you're blocking either. At least there was effort, though. At least he wasn't getting the shit brought to him out there. Amen. You know? That's, that's more sittable, in my opinion, than holding. Yeah. When we're out there just getting blown off, our doors blown off out on the edge, I'd rather play the guy who's going to effort and maybe get a hold every once in a while. Um, fourth and three right here. Same cover one robber look. This guy. Is this Malachi Moore? Man. man I think it is. His eyes lie to you every single time. You can't look at this guy. You got to look at everybody else. Look, that's a young football player. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't even trying. He ain't even going to mess around with it, right? Hey, look, eyes, they ain't playing with it. They're going to keep them locked on their responsibilities. But this dude, this I've been here six years, right? This guy right here, he going to lie to you all day long. You can't look at that guy. All right, but they are playing the same cover one robber, right? He's got eyes on the quarterback. He's got this entire area of the field. They've got one deep safety help. So as we get this double square breaking in over here, that's where we're working, right? That's where we're working as a offense. Now, one thing I do hope that comes out of this, okay? If this is third and three in a real football game, Jonathan, I wonder if Carson's throwing that, right? I wonder if, if he makes this tight window throw, if he, if he rips this football, right? He rips this football with confidence right here because he's got to. It's fourth and three. There's no doubt, right? But sometimes on tape, I do see this guy see an inch of separation, and he just he turns it down because it's not four feet of separation. And, you know, throughout this fourth quarter and throughout this second half, he made a lot of these tight window throws with confidence and with great execution. And I wonder if that provides a sense of, hey, the next time we see this on first and five, the next time we see this on second and six, the next time we see this on third and three in a real football game, we're going to rip this. And we're going to rip this with confidence because we've done it in the heat of battle. Should have been a pick. Should have been a pick. Again, Malachi Moore. Now, I can't quite tell. I think they're playing cover three. I don't know. It's a mixed bag nonetheless, and I think that's why there's such hesitation here from Carson because, first of all, absolutely jacked the shit up out there at, at wide receiver. Colby Young's getting pushed right into the sideline. So that's done. We're cooked there. He comes off of it immediately. Now, we look over here into this picture, and this looks really, really confusing. It looks like we're getting that out, uh, outside, inside, over type of concept, right? We got a corner sitting outside leverage. We got the nickel slash safety sitting inside leverage and the other safety sitting over the top of it, which means this right here is a really, really dangerous football. So right here's a really dangerous football, should have been picked. 
great job mirroring the concepts right here from Malachi, not having your eyes on the receiver, right? His eyes are on the quarterback right here, and he's going to continue to float up underneath this concept. You know why? Because he's seen a lot of football. He's played a lot of football. Probably should have been intercepted. All right, on to the next snap. Same situation here on second and 10. I think you get another run call here. Probably not a, a, a traditional rundown. Maybe. Maybe a traditional rundown, but probably not. Hmm. I'm trying to analyze on the fly. This dude had the game of his life. Deontay Lawson, he makes this play. Watch him make Jared Wilson miss. Right there. That right there makes the play. He has another play later that's just like, what in the hell? But all in the run game. Dude, dude jumps gaps in the run game really, really well. About like you'd think a, a three- or four-year starter in the SEC would do. Uh, back to not executing for Georgia. So we saw a play where Alabama had an opportunity to make a play and didn't do it. There's the difference. There's the difference right there, guys. I mean, I know there's a 23-point score right here. But bottom line, they out-executed you over and over and over and over again. When you had opportunities to make big plays, you didn't. Okay, and they did. It wasn't a P.I., dude. I don't think it is. They both got hands on each other right here. If anything, that's a push-off. You know? Who pushed who? Oh, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. But Kirby definitely Oh, I know. Kirby was in his shit. I got a photo of it. It's hysterical. Kobe was all or Kirby was all over. But I I think to I think it's a good no call. Yeah, I think it's a good no call. Both those guys were pushing on each other. All right. Uh fourth and five. All right. Now, a free play from Georgia. Okay. And here's what I was thinking when I saw this free play. Hey, if we're going to put the ball at risk, let's put the ball at risk 45 yards downfield, right? Let's, let's take the shot. But here, here's the deal, man. Look at this. All right, now, it's fortunate for Bama that they're in this disguised two, cover two man, all right, and they throw this later and almost get another interception. But here's the deal. When we start to see this linebacker leak out this way with his leverage, all right, understand something. They might do this. They might do this and have him run with number three because they do it all the time. All right, so what looks like a cover one robber that they've been playing all game turns all of a sudden into cover two man. All right, and there's a free safety hanging out over there at the top of the field. They're going to continue to do this. This, in my opinion, was about the only adjustment Alabama had defensively, and it about, it about did. It about cost some interceptions and some turnovers right here, okay? But what I was going to say is, on a free play, mm -hmm. Alabama's taking away your two deep shots. They're, they're ultimately double covered. So, yeah, I get it. But we're, if we're going to put this ball at risk, why not just put this ball at risk? But I'm sitting here, you know, wishful thinking with the guy with the keyboard in his hand on a, on a Tuesday afternoon. Let's go to 649. This is a phantom PI call all day. It's a phantom PI call all day. That is not PI, my friend. Now, the only thing I think the back judge got, because I think this guy calls it, is this hand pulling on this hip. They have been taught and told, all right, and ad nauseum this offseason, we are calling defensive holding at a higher rate. We are going to pay attention to it. So the moment he sees that little hip grab and that little hip tug, I'm pretty sure that's the reason he calls that flag. I think he's the one in his pocket back there. Yeah, he points back to it. That's the one who throws it. All right, so that's what got you. That little grab right there. Again, I think it's a little, little uh, ticky-tacky. Ooh, if that ball's completed, though. That ball's completed with a broken tackle. All right, first and 10. Thanks to, a, like I said, a phantom PI call. All right, here we go. Here it is. They come back to it. Look, 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 look. They come back to it. He thinks he's got, he thinks he's got man coverage in the slot over here, okay, against this guy. He thinks he's got leverage running all the way over here. He does not. All right, this dude's going to bump out and lock up with the tight end. The safety's going to drop over the middle field. This guy's going to play this half of the field. And now all of a sudden, Malachi Moore's a free hat about to pick this ball off. Look at this. 
Probably should have been an interception. Probably should have been an interception. Probably shouldn't have been a ball that was thrown by Carson. All right? As soon as we see this, man, as soon as we see this bumped leverage, we've got to be alert. We've got to be alert for him potentially running with number three, which frees this guy up. Okay? All right, on to the next play. I think this is truck play action, maybe? Oh, no, 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 no. They bring pressure again. They, they show a cover zero look, and it gets them cooked again. This was, this was the game plan. Hey, if they show you zero, if they want to do this, we'll play two over two all day. We'll do this. They're, they're giving us nine yards of cushion. We'll play two over two. Again, we stopped blitzing him. When? When did you stop blitzing him on third down or on second and long? Obvious passing downs. When did you stop playing cover zero? I'm confused. You didn't. In fact, it cost you. It cost you defensively the only real explosives uh, to an extent. The next play is the truck play action. It's a staple in Georgia's uh, offensive playbook. All right, it's a man and zone beater, right? We're gonna cross all these guys. You're gonna run here, you're gonna run here, you're gonna run here, you're gonna go here, right? So everybody, if you're in man coverage, gets bumped, rubbed, all kind of messed up. Now, what happens if you play zone coverage? Well, now I'm flooding the zone, right? I have these four options in this one defensive zone that's going to get occupied by a couple of different defenders, right? So it's a man and zone beater right here on the goal line. Great throw right here by Carson. But I think it gets you because they had the right call. Oh, look, your boy. You had the right call against a cover zero blitz checking into that tunnel screen, right, and getting explosive. Now, again, back against the wall, got to make these throws. Two-point conversion. We can be a little bit risque with the football. This is what this dude, if this dude lives on Sundays, if he plays for a long time, it's because something's going to click and he's going to realize, oh, shit, I am that guy. I am that guy with my arm. I can do these things. I can consistently do these things and not worry about turning the ball over if my guy's just got an inkling of space. You got Lawson Lucky running the back line, all right, running the back line right here. All right, he's the last progression. As we roll out, if we throw this ball, we got to throw it all the way back across of our body, all right, across the defense. It's a no-no. We're going to throw it off one foot. We're going to rip a seed, all right, and put it on his face mask. You can do this stuff. I promise you, 15, you can do this stuff. Now, here's what I want and what I've been talking about. Number four, number four plays like he's god dang Superman, and he thinks he's Superman. He, he walks around Earth as if he is Superman. You know who else did it? Five foot 11, 195 pound Stetson Vinny. To a, do it to a default at sometimes. Some of it. Just give me some of it, man. Bring me some of that juice. Bring me some of that type of, uh, you know, vibe. Now, that drive circumstances 100% impacted by fourth downs. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. What do you see? No, I see overhang defenders. That's what I'm pointing out. I see guys that are now defending the, the flats, all right, in the run game. We got, we got bodies to account for whatever you're doing this way. We got bodies to account for it, okay? So when this happens, guess what? Woo, we're there. We got good hats. We got good discipline. We got good alignment. What is that? That's an adjustment. That's a defensive adjustment. That's a great job by a defensive coordinator. However, get the dude on the ground. Great job, Dan Jackson, pursuing. I think it's a one-yard gain. They face a second and 10 here, actually. Zero-yard gain. Yeah. Zero-yard gain. All right. Into empty here. Into empty. All kind of pre-snap motion. I think they're in quarters. All right. That's what I think we got. I think we got you playing this, you playing this. You got the middle of the field. You've got this hash in the middle of the field, and the corner is sitting off over there. So the voids, right there, a little hitch against this uh this cover four. There it is. Boom. Threw it on time. Got it out of his hands with some velocity. Double pumped it too. What did he? What do you want the? Who want the spot over the middle of the, the field? Yeah, he want. He wanted this. Pump fakes it because he sees three overhanging and comes back. This is the progression, man. It's the progression of this football player on display right here.
Great route. Great route. Really, really good route by Ryan Williams. All right, so they keep getting this kind of quarters bail from George, right? This too high safety look. Middle of the field is open. All right, got one safety here, one safety here. This is the look Georgia has played most of the football game. So despite the fact that they have two safeties, the middle of the field is indeed open. So all I have to do is take my slot receiver and get him somehow to force Malachi Starks to open his hips up towards the sideline, sell the fade, all right, and then break in as soon as we get into his window. What do I mean by that? All right, boom, there's the window. So guess what? The break's coming now. I guarantee it. Boom, there's the break. We're in his window. He can't see where we're going. He now has to speed turn. The space is created. That's a win. A win already off the route. So um, now we got in a debate last night about whether or not this was luck or whether or not this was skill, okay? That ball just hit his hands off of a tip from Malachi Starks, right? He's going to tip that ball up again. So we're now, we're now doing this one, okay? We now have the hand-eye coordination to not tap it once to ourselves, but tap it twice, keep it up in the air. Oh, and then we're going to turn all the way back around and now stick this with one hand. Do we, do we still want to call this luck? I think the general consensus still is that it's both. Okay. It's both a great play, great football player, I, ball bounced to you. I think the general consensus is on Sunday this is a touchdown. That's what I think. Because this ball is not thrown well. Sure. Now, he's getting pressure. He's got people in his face. But this ball is thrown back over here. If this ball is thrown out in front of him, this safety's bailing this way, <laughs> we're running to the door, right? Sure. We're running to the door, and he's already beat based off the route. So we can talk about luck. Uh, we can do all that. He was beat on the route concept, okay? Let's go to 922. All right, this is a really good job by Kimber here. Now, they did this in the first half. They ran a very similar play. They just did it out of nub, and they didn't have a free defender over here. What's going to happen here is because they have the wide receiver here in man coverage, he's going to go crack replace on the mic. Now, Jalen Kimber, really, really good job here of understanding what's going on in front of you. Watch Jalen bail off of this and add into run support. He is a hat that they do not have accounted for. All right, what are you smirking at over there? You're he calling is him Kimber again. Huh? You're calling I'm calling him Kimber, Kimber again. God. It's a great job here by Dalen Everett, all right, of getting back involved and in what we would call, I would assume, crack replacing, right? You're basically crack replacing for your linebacker that's getting cracked right now. Normally, the safety has to do it, and he is doing it right now. That's why he's going to be a free hat over here and the plus one. Unfortunately, we need two. We need someone else to play outside of their responsibilities because number four is really damn good. Is that my new Ballard? You know? <laughs> Calling him Kimber. Calling him Kimber. It's a new one. All right, what do you think? 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 I think we're getting jet. I think they're attacking short edges. I think that's what they're doing. I think they're going to try to jet me this way and get one-on-one -on -one with here and maybe even add an additional hat here. That's what I'm thinking. All right, when we get into empty in the red zone, that's what I got. Oh, oh, definitely got it. Definitely got it. I think it's an improper keep right here from Milrow. I think we play the one-on-one -on -one out here. Mm -hmm. That's what I think we do. Got the cameraman all jacked up. All right, up to 10 seconds, 10 minutes right here. Great tackle by Dan. Hey, again, we got conservative with play calling. Um, the system's the system. You're, you're, you're trying to hit the rail again. That's all you're trying to do. All right, we're trying to pick all these guys with some type of mesh spot. We're going to run a bunch of shit in here. But all we're really trying to do is attack that out there. That's all we're really trying to hit and try to get to as an offense right now. That's an adjustment from the defense. And the difference in the first half was what? They won this one-on-one. -on -one. You did not as a Georgia defense. All right? Bama did not win this one-on-one. -on -one. Dan Jackson forces this tackle. Field goal on coming. Here we go. On to the offensive side of the football for Georgia. Here we go. Cover one robber yet again. All right, look at, the, look at the difference in alignment, right? When they did that disguise cover two, this guy bumps out over here, and then he bails, and he takes number three. But because of the alignment right here, there is no way that guy is going to run and cover number three right here. All right, they bump back into this cover one robber look, does Alabama. Same defensive schematics, same kind of uh, base personnel, base core. 
Carson wants to take the one-on-one -on -one back shoulder. Great job on defense right there by Damani Jackson. Playing through the hands right there, right? Punching that ball out. That punch right there is really, really well coached and well done. Going to 10-33. Oh, Deontay Lawson. It just says GD Deontay Lawson. He's right here in the middle. Sorry. I should identify these guys before I just assume that y'all know who I'm talking about. Watch this. All right, here, here's the key. He's, he's, he's simulating pressure, right? Now he understands. All right, I've been playing football a long time. This combination is coming to me. That combination is going here, which means the void of the defense is right there. That's what they're trying to hit. So if I'm going to beat this combination block, I know this guy's the one that's coming off to me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and fill the void right now. I'm going to go ahead and jump in front of the spot he's going to. Right there. Boom. That's made the play. Made the play. I don't know how I coach this if I'm, if I'm talking to Dylan here, right? Because we, we have to stay dedicated to this three-tech. We have to get movement on this three-tech. We have to be committed. Have to get vertical through his inside shoulder. That's why inside peck is what we would say as an offensive line. All right, we got to get vertical through his shoulders. Okay, we got to go, mm, and then we're going to get that bump off to him. All right, but we got to get flat off of the combination block. We can't be too, too vertical. Great play. Ooh, third and six. We need to run the same concepts as them. We need to run the same concepts. Buddy, mesh spot. Bama been running it all god dang game. All god dang game. Mesh spot with the running back rail. We need. It's the same thing. You know, I was uh, preseason, I asked Bobo. I said, uh, you know, game's changed a lot, 20 years. Formations, alignment, how we play football. It's kind of changed. Who do, you, who do you study? Who are you going to? Who are you looking at for new concepts? And you know what he told me? I talked to Jim Donnan. I talked to Mark Rick. Because football hasn't changed. The concepts are the concepts. We've been running the same. Ain't, ain't a new invention brought to football in years. And people say, ooh, the RPO. You know what the RPO is? It's an option. <laughs> football started with option football. Like, it's just option in space. But it's still the same option concepts. Okay? Football has not changed all that much. There's no, there's only, there's very few football coaches in the world that are drawing the dirt coordinators. In the middle of the game, they're going to go over there and go, all right, guys, come on, huddle up. This is what we're going to do. We're going to run a play we ain't never ran before, and we're going to hope everybody executes it. Ain't nobody doing that shit. We need to run the same concepts. Eleven seconds right here, or eleven minutes rather. Ooh. Bama bumps into a cover three out of nowhere. Check this out. Random, random. Hadn't seen this. They're a Tampa two team, right? That's what they like to do. They're gonna bail the corner right here. Run him back. Good thing is, Georgia's got a man and zone beater called right here with this uh, truck toss play action, I believe, is what they got going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is the same thing they ran in the, uh, in the red zone that we told you can beat both man and zone, right? Because these guys are running away from their man leverage if they get it, and we're flooding zone concepts if we get that. So here's the deal. This is a perfectly thrown football. All right, you know why? Because this corner that's running in the deep thirds, he has eyes on me. All right, so as I throw this football, he's going to squat. If I throw this ball this way, it's a pick or a decapitation. So what we have to do is throw this ball up and out over here. This ball has got to be caught. Matter of fact, the last, I don't know, three, four years, that ball was caught. Mm -hmm. That ball was caught. And, in fact, I've actually seen 19, and this is why 19 is a great football player. I've seen 19 catch this football, pirouette, put his feet down, Tightrope the sideline, take it 40 to the gate. All right? So, yeah, a little bit different, a little bit different. But the ball, the ball is the ball. We can't put it anywhere else, right? If we, if we throw this ball here, he is dead. He is dead. All right? We're carting him off. 
All right, but instead, we just end up with a drop. Oh, cover one robber again. Oh, man. All right, so it's cover one. All right, he's the robber. He's got a free eye. He is manned up with the tight end. So what's going to happen here as the tight end adds into protection, now Malachi becomes a free eye. All right, he's in the box, and he's floating and can play free. He can do whatever he wants right now. Here's my thing. All right, they're in man coverage out here. We got a smash concept. We got a hitch, and we got the corner, and we're rolling to it. In my opinion, this corner's running to grass. This corner's running to grass, all right? Missed opportunity. Granted, it's a completion. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, you know, positive yardage. I think we've got a lot of positive yardage there on the corner working with leverage, right? We throw that ball right now. Or maybe just one more step, let it clear, make the corner declare on the hitch, right? And then we got the smash. Because as soon as he sees that wide receiver hitch up, he's biting down. 11.43. Four downs, play call. Third and five, truck toss. Yeah, that's we got four downs, right? There's no doubt about it. Great job by Bama pursuing. How did Deontay get to this? Where's he at? He fights from the line of scrimmage. He fights from the zero tech all the way over to this. That's, God. <sighs> I had an offensive line coach my freshman, race her freshman year, first time I was a real true starter. I had a fourth and one while I was loafing on the backside. Backside cut off, dude beat me across my face. He makes the tackle on fourth and one. We lose the football game. And you know what my offensive line coach did on Monday? He sat there in that meeting room and he played that clip over and over and over and over and over again. And he told my upperclassmen, this is what your redshirt freshman puts on tape in critical moments of the football game. This is the type of effort that he's playing with. This is the type of effort that we are playing with in the fourth quarter of a football game on the road down 18. All it is is stopping. That's all it is. All it is is we are stopping what we are doing. We are just, we're going to loaf. We're going to take the play off. Now I know the play's blown up. The play's blown up right here. I know. But guess, guess who's been, like, all year doing his job? Number one. Number one has been taking care of plus one defenders the entire year. What he can't do is take care of plus two and plus three and plus four. Nothing will get me hotter than a lack of effort. Nothing. And consistent lack of effort when it's something that I know for a fact they're pointing out. I know. Because it's impossible not to see. Hey, guess what defense? Cover one. Cover one robber. You damn right. Cover one robber. The whole time. So what's he know? What's he know? I got robber. I got this and this. So this linebacker is going to get pulled. We are running against the man coverage lever. All we got to do is make sure this robber does not float back up underneath us. All right, so we got to get eyes on him at some point in this drop, and he does. As soon as he sees this guy clear this way, we're working back left. All right, again, tight window throws that I need you to. I need you to pull triggers on this the rest of the year. Fifteen, you got to. You got to pull triggers on these. All right, you don't have guys that are going to be creating nine yards of separation anymore. We got to rip these balls. Hey yo. <laughs> My bad. We're about an hour in. That's on me. <laughs> um, hey, duos, look, they're about to get to this later, okay? I want everyone to pay attention. 
This is how you, this is how you know. You, made, you didn't make enough adjustments. You made some defensively. We're seeing those right now, right? Some of those cover two disguises out of cover one robber. All right, but you didn't make a ton of adjustments. When, when we as an offense went into this duos look, we saw you do this stuff, this inside, outside, over the top here with the safety. Now, the safety at the snap is going to turn, run, put his damn face to this crowd, and then he's going to get to his drop. He's going to settle and put his eyes on the quarterback. And Saab, this nearside safety, is really, really bitey. Okay, he's really, really bitey. He's an aggressive football player. All right, when he comes to balance right here, if we flash any color in front of his face, He's going to bite. He's going to pull down on it, all right? And then we've got this double move a little bit later in the football game. But as a good coordinator, you're going to see, we got to make sure, we got to confirm that we're going to get it, all right? We're going to we got to confirm that we're going to get that coverage before we call the double move. Can't do this. Absolutely cannot do this. Can't fumble this football. I know, fumbles happen, all that stuff. Um, mistakes happen. We, we got we to gotta protect this ball. Also, It's unfortunate timing here with wh where he feels pressure because Anthony Evans runs to grass as soon as he looks away. Great collision right there from Alabama. Great collision by that linebacker. This opens to grass, but watch. Carson's going to take his eyes off of it. He's got eyes on right now. He sees color, and then he's going to work away immediately. As soon as he does, Anthony works to grass. That's really unfortunate timing, all right? But it's only unfortunate timing that's created by what he thinks is a muddy pocket. I wouldn't exactly de de uh, define that as a muddy pocket. I think we could probably reset, all right, and throw that ball here as opposed to scrambling out of it. But again, I'm a big fat guy with a keyboard in my hand on Tuesday, not playing this live down 18 on the road in Tuscaloosa. Oh, we got our first, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing, 78? Why are we getting upfield? You never get upfield. You're never allowed to get upfield. What are you doing? Look at this. Do we think we're getting pass rush? But the tackle pulls, yeah. Jonathan? Yeah, no. I'm that was the only thing I could think of. The tackle pulls. What we should be doing right now is pushing back in. We should be pushing back in to this guard that's back blocking against us. We should be holding firm because the last thing we can do is create a level. We can't create a level, right? We're on separate levels right now. We're back here. Everybody else is back here. And when we do that, whoo, wow, there's a bunch of grass right there. Why? We're on separate levels. Also, you're cooked. You got no chance, right? Because you have to be honest and guarding four. So you, the, the backside edge has been told all halftime adjustment. Oh, by the way, overhang. The whole back, the whole halftime adjustment has been told, hey, we got to watch four out the back, four out the back, four out the back, four out the back. All right. Great job at least adding back in and getting into the play, but that play is blown up uh, by 78 getting so far upfield. All right, check this out. All right, so Bama's trying to get to this shortened edge again. All right, look at Georgia adjust. Check this out. Look at all the alignment bumps. He just bumped out. We're going to get another one here in just a second. Oh, here comes the safety. And the defensive lineman has bumped out. All right, so everyone, oh, and we have this free hat over here. So we have bumped alignment. We have adjusted as a defense. Okay, watch what Alabama now does. And you can tell it's messing with them. You can tell they haven't, they weren't necessarily prepared for Georgia to adjust like this. Now we're going to check with me. And guess what we're going to do, Jonathan? We're just going to run it to the other side. Fuck y'all. Y'all want to overload this side? We're just going to run it to the other side. Screw all that shit. Okay? So the adjustments are great. The adjustments are good. They adjusted to your adjustment, all right? And only picked up about two yards right here. I think he forced a third, or one yard. Forced a third and four. Great job right here by C.J. Allen, forcing this ball out, continuing to play upfield on this shoulder of this blocker, continuing to run outside and, and, and turning this ball back in at any chance you can get. But the adjustment caused that play, in my opinion. Let's go to 14-10. Oh, no, we're going to 13-49 right quick. Y'all punt on that next play. Oh, no, no, no. Let's go to 1335. We missed a play on third down. Third and four. Ninety-seven makes a play. This play should hit. You got the perfect screen called. Perfect screen called against what appears to be some type of quarters engage eight, essentially. <laughs> engage six, if you will. 
We're going to play a soft zone with these five guys. Everybody else is coming. All right. Everybody else is coming. This is a great play by 97. A really good play that saves an explosive because I think this hits big. All right. I think this hits really, 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 really big. I don't even know if it's a screen because 81's turned around looking for a pop pass, though. What's up with the snap? That's, that's a little yeah, I, I think we're just dis, I, I think we're discombobulated. And I also think he thinks he's got a free play. Uh, that's why the center snapped the ball. Center thinks yeah. he's got a free play off the motion. He does not. All right, so, yeah, that's what happened. Good call there, Jonathan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? What is this? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? He's pointing. He's pointing to his quarterback, telling him where to go. We're telling him what to do, one or the other. Yeah, he thinks he's got a free play. All right, so now you punt. On to Georgia's next possession. Hmm. Back into a cover three from Alabama. So they did make a slight adjustment here. It causes some hesitation by uh, Georgia and Georgia doesn't exactly have a three beater call. They have something. They got a, a, it works to an extent. All right, but we're running it into the void, right? We got a deep third corner there. All right, and the safety here, and we're running this post and trying to hit this right here. But the corner's going to be on our back the whole time. A good three beater might be actually maybe like a post in a corner, get that guy to actually bite on it, or maybe, you know, flood the zone a little bit. But we've been getting cover one robber a lot of this football game. The only other really adjustment from Alabama has been Tampa two, and maybe a little disguise two man. We've seen that. So getting this cover three look for the second time in the second half, Caused some hesitation right here, even though I guess you could say this ball could be caught. I think it's a better play by the corner. Mm -hmm. Better play by the corner. Where are we at time-wise, Jonathan? 56. All right. We're almost – well, that's a lie. We're not almost done. we got a whole quarter left. Sorry, guys. Tough. You got a lot of content today. Uh, 77's oversetting – or 71's oversetting. 71 is oversetting, and uh, you might have a shot. This is definitely running to grass. That's taking that away. So we could probably hit this, but we are cooked. And why are we cooked? Well, it's what I talked about the last couple weeks. Why is he oversetting? Well, for three weeks, he's been getting beat by speed rush. So he's trying to get the hell up out of there because he's been getting beat by speed rush. And now, guess what's going to happen? A little counter on your ass. The key to this counter, all right, and this move back inside is this overhand swipe right there. Getting that hand back up over the top of that tackle is going to render him useless. He's going to be in this position really, really quickly, pushing you into the quarterback. Great job by Carson, at least extending the play and creating some type of positive momentum right there, some type of positive play. Let's go to 14-37. Um, can't make this mistake twice. What do you see, Jonathan? That leverage has bumped out. That leverage has bumped out. They've been playing a lot of cover one robber, right? Which means this safety's got the middle of the field, and this guy's been playing eyes on me at, up here in the middle, which means we've got no safety help over this field fade in that situation. However, they have already shown it. The moment he bumps alignment, we are getting that disguise cover two man. Okay, he's going to lock up with number three, and you're going to have a safety over the top of this play. We cannot make this mistake twice. We can't. We cannot throw this football, all right, and almost get it picked off again. Can't do that. Now, I saw this clip pop up on Twitter, okay? I saw this clip pop up on Twitter. It was like, oh, why didn't he take the slant? Well, his eyes are going to the midfield safety right now. His eyes are going here. So when he sees this guy squat, he's clicking immediately off. All right. Now, what he doesn't know, what he doesn't know, obviously, is that this safety's got this corner of the field. Pressure also doesn't help, which is on the center and the right guard again. You're the University of Georgia. You're the University of Georgia. We can leave our tackles on islands. We can. That's why they're here. They're supposed to be able to block. So lock him up. 
Mike 34. These are the five guys we've got to take. So no matter what, we should be in a four-man slide this way, and he should be locked. Why is the right guard ever looking to his right? And again, not in the room. Don't know what 56 is being taught. I just know my, my rules of pass protection tell me one, two, three, four, five. Those are the five guys we've got that are most threatening. Maybe six. Maybe. But he hadn't come all game from that distance, so we're not going to count him. These are the five we got to look at. So, makes real sense. We're going to call Mike zero, us four, and us five got these five. Nice and simple. So how do we go about blocking those five? All right. Well, we got to definitely keep our eyes this way because these four guys could come from this area. I think this is P.I. I think he gets there early. <clears throat> You can't quite see it because he's up underneath this little Geico cast right here. But we're completely engaged, and we never come up off of him at all. We're completely locked. All right, that's P.I. Doesn't get called, I don't believe, or does. Does get called. It's an easy call. All right. Going to 1509. Great recognition and timing against this Tampa 2 look right here from Carson. All right. We know three by one, they've been playing Tampa two, all right? Which means he's got deep third, he's got the flat, he's gonna bump out here into the hook, he's got the middle of the field if number three runs vertically, which is exactly what happens. Number three goes this way, it takes number 11 up out of the picture. Now, we've got this bender coming in over here, which means we've gotta throw it up over this guy and up underneath this defender as well. I know a lot of yellow up on that board, but you see what I'm talking about, okay? It's a very anticipatory throw from Carson. There's that Anthony Evans guy again there, Jonathan. I was just about to say, I've seen a little bit more of him in this game. So Yeah, he was, I mean, he was getting play. No doubt about it. This was here all game against this robber look, right? You got this pretty much every time you wanted it, if you wanted it. Um, problem was execution, right? You had a couple of these deep shots in the first half. Uh, Aaron Smith dropped one. Dominic Lovett got called back on PI, dropped another one. Kobe Young. Back shoulders a ball right here. This was available for most of the football game. Also, by the way, Dylan Bell's winning down here on the bottom as well. Okay. A lot of winning going on. A lot of winning going on on this rep. I think Dylan's a touchdown, <laughs> to be honest with you. But if we're taking a 50-50 anywhere, it's with the 6-5 guy pre-snap. So I understand what we're doing there as an offense. Okay. I actually really like this coverage from Bama. It doesn't work out for them, but I really love this in the red zone, knowing that teams are going to mesh me a lot, knowing teams are going to cross me a lot, run a lot of that stuff. Look what they're doing. They're taking all of their defenders and putting them in zone with their eyes outside, right? We're going to put our butt to the inside. We're going to make them defy our leverage. We make them run through us right here on the goal line. Lucky does a really, really good job right here of attacking the upfield shoulder from Lawson, I believe that is. And then Carson does a great job of putting this ball up and over that back shoulder of Lawson while he's in trail. All right, first miss of the day coming up from Milrow, in my opinion. Okay? We've got the wheel, we've got a hook, and we've got the corner out here, right? So all we're really reading is this corner defender right here. Where does he go? I think, uh, I almost did it again. I think Dalen does a good job here of kind of playing both, right? Showing that I'm going to squat on the hook while also being able to maybe by alignment get back to the corner. And it causes some hesitation right here from uh, Milrow. This ball should be ripped right now to this corner, all right? And should be a completion. The coordinator has drawn us up a winner. It is an incompletion because it's thrown just a tad bit late and thrown inside, okay? See us double clutching that football right there, Jonathan? We think we got the hitch right there. Great job by, again, Dalen kind of taking away both um, and making this throw a little bit harder. But first, miss, if you will. And we've got 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. He played pretty damn flawlessly. Um, you can tell the 3-3-5 did something to him. 
okay? You bump into this look right here, okay? Three, three, five, all, all three linebackers on the field. Looks like you're going to play too high, maybe some type of lock right here. I don't know what coverage you got going on in the back end. Most teams are zone coverage teams out of a three, three, five, obviously, because we don't have anybody over him, right? We don't have really anybody paying attention to the back right now other than C.J. Allen. So alignment would tell you you're probably getting some type of zone coverage. All right, but nonetheless, clear that Alabama, based off how they're checking, right, how they're going with check with me. I know they're a check with me offense to an extent most of the time, but I could tell there was a little bit of a hesitation from the sideline right here as to what we're going to call, how we're going to attack this quote-unquote new defense that George has given us. That's fine. As a defense, him running laterally, we're, we're okay with that. We're going we're gonna to live with three-yard three, uh, three rushes into the boundary. <sighs> hmm. 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 Was this two-man? Robber from Georgia, actually. Safety's going to walk down and take Jam Miller out of the backfield. These two guys are locked in man coverage, both of which get absolutely obliterated right here on these routes. Absolute grass run into it. Watch this. This is absolute cooked. Okay. A lot of, lot of grass available for both these guys. And here's the deal. I honestly think if this ball's thrown like it might have been or might have could have been, um, now granted, Dan Jackson's right there, so I think I understand why we throw this a little short. But could you imagine if this is hit in stride? If this is hit with the ability to run after the catch? This is a nightmare, right? <sighs> All right, but he gets to it. I would argue that that was won by the receivers more so than the uh, quarterback, but the quarterback finds the open man and gets him hit. Seven twenty-six. great recognition and effort by 52. Uh, great individual effort right here by the nose tackle. Felt it needed some, uh, some shouts. What do you see, Jonathan? Here's what I see. Yeah, the alignment. Look at the alignment. Look at all these guys as motion starts to come. Look at them adjust to what happened to them in the first half. Look, everybody's playing out, right? Everybody's playing out, out, out. He even dives out, right? Tyrion Ingram Dawkins, great play right here, okay? Acts like he's going to take the pitch, stops, all right? Gets back in, makes the play on the quarterback. That's what it requires, tremendous individual efforts. What's up? Oh, yeah. It's a great play by 93. All right, 18. I haven't seen this before from Georgia. Not, not, not this year, at least. They're just going to play everybody at the sticks right here on third and 11. They, they almost get this completed still. Look at this rush from CJ. It's almost like he runs without his eyes looking at where he's going until the last second. Look. His eyes and head are this way, the whole way. It was a bullet. All right, 18-20. Last couple of plays here, guys. It's a simulated pressure from Alabama. I think this is a great play from Carson. It's a really good play from Carson. They drop into a, a, a zone coverage right here, does Alabama. Okay, boom. Malachi's in absolute rescue mode I think he might have the middle of the field he's bailing like shit but they're getting zone coverage and everything looks kind of covered right now until we step up all right and throw this ball with a good amount of touch right here this is this is probably one of the better plays Carson made all day hmm. uh you tell me what this is I think it's a really good ball against man coverage. But what is that, Jonathan? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a push off. All right. 
But put it in the hands of the, uh, of the referee. You know what I mean? Make him make the call. Oh, look. There's a handsome guy in the film. Bang! Compensating a little bit with that lens, eh, bud? <laughs> All right. I'm trying to... We're, we're, we're what? An hour and 20 in at this point? Hour and 10. All right. Hold on. Should we watch a two-minute... Or should we watch, oh, no, no, let's watch Bobo Cook right quick. All right, 21-11. Again, not a ton of adjustments from Alabama. We told you if they put you in duos, you would play this version of Tampa, right? You'd bail these two safeties. Now, this short side safety, we told you, as soon as he gets to his feet squatted, as soon as he gets to this position right now, he's a little bit grabby. So if we dig and go him right now, and we found this out on Tuesday via film study, if we dig and go him right now, we got a tud. And that's exactly what they got going on. Now, you might ask, why didn't they call this earlier in the game? Why wasn't this called? This is a situational play call. You don't pull this out until, A, you know you've confirmed it. You've seen it on tape. You've seen it in game. You've seen it happen. We know we got it. And then you wait. You wait. You wait. You wait. It's your last goddamn punch. And this is what it was. This is the last punch from Georgia offensively from an explosive, we got a winner drawn up standpoint. Great job by Dylan right here making a play after the catch as well. And, of course, run into your boy's lens. Appreciate you, my guy. Appreciate you, my guy. All right, um, but here's the reality, right? And here's what this game boiled down to. Every single time Alabama needed to make a play, they did. They did, right? Every single time they needed to make one of these, by God, they made it. And you didn't, right? And that's what it boils down to sometimes. You, you did a great job executing and coming back. Fourth downs obviously uh, played a role in your execution in the second half, or at least in your play con, not necessarily your execution, all right? But this is the reality. Every time they made it, needed to make a play, they made it. There ain't no doubt about it. All right. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, man. Uh, if you're an Alabama fan and you're new to this network, please hit subscribe. All right. We do a live content or we do live shows Monday through Thursday, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock right here on the network. And I think we do it really, really well. Appreciate you guys for being here. Love you. See you. Bye.